Now, we start a new subsection in respiratory physiology, transport of oxygen and carbon dioxide, and a regulation of ventilation. But first, we will start with oxygen content. It is very important to know that the concentration, concentration of oxygen in a blood is usually referred to as a blood oxygen content. In a systemic arterial blood, it varies with hematocrit, but a value of 20 volumes per cent is a normal value. This means if you take 100 ml of arterial blood sample, 20 ml out of this 100 total percent will be oxygen. It is 20 volumes of oxygen per 100 volumes of blood. It is extremely important to note that this 20 volumes per cent which is the normal total oxygen content, comes in two separate forms. First, dissolved oxygen in a plasma, and the second, oxygen attached to hemoglobin, which is referred as oxyhemoglobin. 0.3 out of the 20 volumes per cent is dissolved in plasma, and the remaining 19.7 volumes per cent is attached to hemoglobin. This oxyhemoglobin is the only significant form in which oxygen is delivered to the tissue. 19.7 out of 20 volumes per cent. First, let's talk about dissolved plasma oxygen. It is important to know that when a patient breathes in, first the alveolar oxygen will diffuse into the blood. And its oxygen dissolves in plasma. Important point, oxygen diffusion occurs based on solubility. This dissolved oxygen in systemic arteries is again 0.3 ml per 100 ml of blood. It is very important to note that this 0.3 ml creates the PO2, partial pressure of oxygen, which in arterial blood is 100 millimeters of mercury. Hemoglobin does not create the PO2. Therefore, there is a direct linear relationship between blood PO2 and volume of dissolved oxygen. And let me show you this in a graph. On the y-axis, we have dissolved oxygen content volumes per cent. And normally in arterial blood, it is 0.3. And on x-axis, we have PO2 in the blood. As the dissolved oxygen increases, the PO2 also increases. Thus, we get the line that again explains that the PO2 is directly proportional to dissolved oxygen. At PO2 100 millimeters of mercury, the amount of dissolved oxygen is 0.3 and arterial blood is at this point. It is very important to note that hyperventilation or supplementing the inspired air with additional oxygen in a normal individual can increase dissolved oxygen maximal to point formulas and a PO2 to 130 millimeters of mercury. We cannot go beyond this point. However, this small change in PO2 and dissolved oxygen has an effect on the total oxygen content. It slightly increases it. It is important to note, when the oxygen dissolves in a plasma, only then it diffuses to the red blood cells and further attaches to the hemoglobin within the red blood cells. Again, oxygen does not diffuse directly to the hemoglobin of the red blood cells. First, it dissolves in a plasma and then diffuses to the red blood cells and finally attaches to hemoglobin, forming oxyhemoglobin. And now this brings us to the oxyhemoglobin. Let's talk about oxyhemoglobin, the main oxygen transporting form to the tissue in a little bit more detail. It is very important to note that when a dissolved oxygen diffuses to the red blood cells, first it dissolves in red blood cells. Within the red blood cells, there are millions of hemoglobin molecules 
but let me draw one for explanation purposes. Each hemoglobin molecule has four binding sites. When a dissolved oxygen diffuses to the red blood cells, it attaches to these binding sites. This one hemoglobin can attach and carry up to four oxygen molecules. When all these four binding sites are occupied by oxygen, we say that hemoglobin is 100% saturated. Consequently, if it is carrying only three oxygen, we would say that hemoglobin is 75% saturated and so on and so forth. So what determines the hemoglobin saturation? What determines how much oxygen will be bound to hemoglobin? Well, hemoglobin saturation depends on dissolved oxygen in plasma, which creates PO2. Yes, that little 0.3 volumes per cent. In other words, partial pressure of oxygen, which is again created by dissolved plasma oxygen, is the force which provides hemoglobin with oxygen and holds them attached to the binding sites of hemoglobin. In order to explain how the hemoglobin travels to tissue and downloads its hemoglobin, let me draw here the lungs, the pulmonary vessels, capillary, and tissue. In the lung capillaries, where gas exchange occurs, the PO2 is 100 millimeters of mercury equal to alveolar PO2. At 100 millimeters of mercury PO2, all binding sites of hemoglobin are occupied by oxygen. In other words, hemoglobin is 100% saturated. As the blood further flows and reaches the tissue, the PO2 is still 100 millimeters of mercury and hemoglobin saturation is, let's say, uh, 100%. Actually, it is 97% due to pulmonary shunt, but let's say it is 100% and all four sides are bound with oxygen. First, the dissolved oxygen diffuses from plasma to the tissue not from hemoglobin. As a consequence, the PO2 starts dropping. As the PO2 decreases below 100 down to 40 millimeters of mercury, the hemoglobin downloads one oxygen from binding sites to the plasma and dissolves there. Therefore, the hemoglobin now will be 75% saturated. If the tissue requires more oxygen, it gets it again from the dissolved oxygen. As a consequence, the PO2 further drops. If it decreases below 40 down to 26 millimeters of mercury, the second oxygen downloads from hemoglobin to the plasma. Now the hemoglobin is 50% saturated. This brings us to a very important conclusion. This is the PO2 that determines the amount of oxygen bound to hemoglobin. Decreased PO2 downloads oxygen from hemoglobin and decreases saturation, whereas increased PO2 uploads oxygen to hemoglobin and increases saturation. Let me explain this one more time by drawing a diagram. On a y-axis, we have the hemoglobin saturation, and on an x-axis, we have PO2. We will see on this graph the dependence on hemoglobin saturation on partial pressure of oxygen. In a nutshell, as the PO2 increases, the hemoglobin starts becoming more and more saturated. Conversely, as the PO2 starts falling, the hemoglobin saturation also starts falling. In systemic arteries, the PO2 is 100 millimeters of mercury. At this pressure, the hemoglobin is 100% saturated. Actually, it is 97% saturated due to pulmonary shunt, but let us use 100 to make it easier to understand. This means that all four sites are occupied by oxygen. So we are at this point. As the PO2 drops from 100 down to 40 millimeters of mercury, 
the hemoglobin downloads one oxygen to plasma, meaning now it has three oxygen. Thus, it becomes 75% saturated. So now we reach this point. If the PO2 further drops down to 26 millimeters of mercury, the hemoglobin downloads the second oxygen, meaning now it has two oxygen. Thus, it is 50% saturated. So we are at this point now. It is important to know that this point is called P50. P50 is the PO2 that is required for 50% hemoglobin saturation. Now, if we interconnect these points, we get this sigmoid curve, which I'm sure you recognize. If not, this is known as the oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve. It is a sigmoid curve and not linear relationship because of hemoglobin positive cooperativity. Let's talk about the hemoglobin positive cooperativity in a little bit more detail. So another important point to talk about is cooperative binding phenomenon. It is very important to note that each binding site of hemoglobin has a different affinity for oxygen. Under physiological conditions, the first binding point remains attached. When point 1 is occupied, all other sites increase in affinity. Again, each site gains different affinity. The second site has highest affinity, the third less affinity, and the fourth least affinity. What they mean is, when a first site is occupied, an oxygen comes. This oxygen attaches to the site which has highest affinity for oxygen. In this case, the oxygen attaches first to the second site because it has highest affinity for oxygen. When second site is occupied, this causes the conformational change in the third site and increase its affinity. The next oxygen which comes attached to the third binding site. If third site is occupied, it increases affinity of fourth site and next oxygen which comes attached to this site. This is called cooperative binding. This means you only need to increase the plasma PO2 above 26 millimeters of mercury and a second site will bind oxygen and hemoglobin will be 50% saturated. They give this PO2 a special name, P50. P50 by definition is the PO2 that is required to saturate the hemoglobin to 50%. P50 increases or decreases due to different reasons and later we will talk about it in a bit more detail. Next you have to increase the PO2 above 40 millimeters of mercury and a third point binds oxygen and hemoglobin saturates to 75%. If you increase the PO2 to about 100 millimeters of mercury the fourth site binds oxygen and hemoglobin saturation will be 97%. It is not 100% saturated because of physiological pulmonary shunt. The first hemoglobin is 25% saturated, second 50%, third 75% and fourth 97%. If they ask which one is systemic arterial blood and which one systemic venous blood, you have to know that systemic arterial blood is 97% saturated. So the fourth hemoglobin is hemoglobin of arterial blood. Respectively, the third is hemoglobin of venous blood under resting condition. The second also may be hemoglobin of venous blood after exercise. And in a site one, oxygen usually remains attached under physiologic conditions. Another important point to talk about is hemoglobin oxygen content. This of course helps us to understand the total oxygen content and how it changes when hemoglobin oxygen content changes in case of anemia and polycythemia.
it is very important to note that each 100 ml of blood has 15 gram hemoglobin and this is what is called concentration of hemoglobin in blood. One gram of hemoglobin can combine with 1.34 ml of oxygen. In order to determine the hemoglobin oxygen content in 100 ml of arterial blood, we use this formula which has hemoglobin oxygen content is equal to hemoglobin concentration times 1.34 times hemoglobin saturation divided by 100. So let's calculate it. 15, which is concentration of hemoglobin in 100 mL of blood, times carrying capacity of 1 gram hemoglobin, which is 1.34 times 97, which is hemoglobin saturation in arterial blood, divided by PO2 of 100. So we get 19.5 volumes per cent. 19.5 volumes per cent plus dissolved oxygen will be approximately 20 volumes per cent. This volume represents the carrying capacity of the blood. Now, it is time to conclude what we have said in this video and add some important points for the USMLE. Again, the concentration of blood oxygen is usually referred to as a blood oxygen content. In a systemic arterial blood, it varies with hematocrit, but a value of 20 volumes per cent, meaning 20 ml oxygen per 100 ml blood is a normal value. In other words, this is the total oxygen of blood. The total oxygen comes in two separate forms. In dissolved in plasma, and attached to hemoglobin which is called oxyhemoglobin. The dissolved oxygen in plasma creates the PO2 of 100 mm of mercury in arterial blood. This amounts to 0.3 volumes per cent. The remaining 19.7 volumes per cent is found attached to hemoglobin. The hemoglobin oxygen does not participate in creating PO2. It is very important to note that oxygen carried by hemoglobin is dependent on two factors, concentration of hemoglobin and saturation. Concentration of hemoglobin is 15 grams per 100 ml of blood. In clinical practice, there are two common diseases that affect the hemoglobin concentration in a person, polycythemia and anemia. In case of polycythemia, the concentration of hemoglobin increases. This in turn increases the amount of oxygen carried by hemoglobin. If the amount of oxygen carried by hemoglobin increases, this means the total oxygen content increases. The opposite is true for anemia. In case of anemia, the hemoglobin concentration decreases. This in turn decreases the amount of oxygen carried by hemoglobin. If the amount of oxygen carried by hemoglobin decreases, the total oxygen content decreases. It is extremely important to know that the polycythemia and anemia do not affect the PO2. Finally, hemoglobin saturation is 97% in systemic arterial blood and we have already mentioned how it depends on PO2 and how it decreases in systemic venous blood.